Hello everyone, Kurt Olfer here and welcome back to another episode from Hofer Labs. Uh, this is a, another special here in regards to uh, sharing the class that I was able to give at the WMAW uh, 2024 uh, class. And it was the second one that I had scheduled, which was the why I talk about sort algorithm and how we I may mean, observe and how we enter and then from there how that kind of dictates what it is we're trying to do against an opponent. Now, with all the, the, the works of Fiore, again, I, I go off the premise of what the maestro says in regards to advice. And again, my, for, for me, I define that as a you're looking at somebody, you observe how their strengths and weaknesses are, and from there, you're going to be able to move your tools to task. Uh, this concept right here built a lot in regards to the first crossing of the manuscript when it comes down to the, the sword in two hands, but also into the other crossings that come to it, because essentially... I don't see it as just a single play. I see them as algorithmic points that allow us to gain entry. Something I experience many times when I talk about this with people is there is a discussion point that is to be had in regards to, you know, okay, we have this play here that we're just trying to work, that we work on as far as a concept. Um, up to this point that you really, for, there's a lot of times where I feel many people forget, to include myself, that there's a lot more than just this one way of creating that situation. With seven lines, uh, the different ways you can make crossings and so on and so forth, this becomes a larger picture in regards to the practice of the sword when it comes down to using it. And that's kind of what I work with it. Um, so that's what this, this class is about. Again, it's, 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 it's just taking all the concepts and maybe making a broader sense of this first play that we see in there uh, in regards to the, how we make crossings and so on and so forth. And just kind of my observations and letting people kind of work with different types of tools at the time. I apologize if some of the, uh, the some of the audio is a little bit uh, wonky. I was again, people filmed it and they gave me the film afterwards. I wasn't asking anybody to film me. I didn't film myself. So when people gave me this, I may have been talking to a 360 um, group of people out there. All that to say is that I may not be as as, as heard or audible uh, because of that time. So I apologize ahead of time with that. But regardless, I think most of it's going to come across and make a lot of sense. But regardless of that, please. Uh, don't forget, like, subscribe, share with a friend, and uh, let me know how you're doing out, the, how, how I'm doing out there with a comment below in regards to this and any thoughts that you might have. And as always, stay safe out there, train well, and fight on, and enjoy the footage. Actually, as I stand here like this, we oftentimes see images of Fiore being like this. So the algorithm has got variables, the ones I mentioned, but the constant is this, and this is what we're trying to disrupt, not this. So in this case, if we apply the senu to stance, avizamento, arimento, forteza, prezza, then we have a good algorithm of being able to see how we have movement and speed in different direction of the lead leg. I'm grounded in with strength, with good prezza, and when motion and movement is proper, I might move with courage into danger. Also note, it's not divided. I cannot have my attention divided between my opponent and myself. But that does not mean necessarily just around me. That also means within me. So if I stand in a position like this right here, and I'm like, oh shit, I'm not, I'm not in a position, I'm off balance. Is my attention divided? Yes because I'm now no longer in a structured position of response. We can sit there and say, but what if I want to appear a certain way here? Do you really want to gamble with it? Think about the five times that Fiore had to defend, defend himself and his honor with nobody except for his sword, his God, and himself in the ark. Is that really what you want to gamble right there? Yeah, come on, hit me. We're not talking about 16th century dueling culture, and we're not talking about fighting for a prize. So of, the, of these variables, I offer a different concept when it comes down to Largo and Stretto. But before I get to that, I'd like to hear, what are, what are some concepts out there that people have about what these two meanings might mean? Because you're already silent. Please. Stretto is if you can reach them with your hand. Stretto is if you can reach with your hand, okay, one. It's when you're playing tied against their sword. Stretto is. When you're, when you're tied against their sword, it is. Or is that what is it? Is it defined that way? No. Okay. Well, uh, stretto is uh, symmetrical footwork, and uh, largo is mirrored footwork. Okay. 
mirrored footwork structure and your different foot structure. Anyone else? I offer you something different. Because to me, it's not distance. If you want to know where distance is, the crossing of the sword is your distance. If we take this shape right here and lay it flat down, then the Mazzani line becomes Largo. And I might a crest to crest, Largo. I may pass Largo. I'd also offer that in Stretto, your Fendente line becomes Stretto. So I can accress in a narrow, a narrow motion, or I might pass in a narrow motion. So we have motions right here that cause different angles of approach. And when blades stick and breaking and binding become choice of actions because of the anatomy and the environment of the blade, that causes different manipulation and processing. So what I want to do here is again, so I'm going to break this up here. Beautiful senyo, I know. What I want to do here is I want to, I'm going to have, I want to have, uh, let me read a copy of this. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So what I want to do is let's get, let's get four groups of five so that way we can observe. And we're going to rotate there. That, the reason I'm doing this right here is because I want to be able to give a pair of people that are working out there, sharp simulators, to also experience how this phenomenon may approach differently. Okay? So what I want to do here right now, just to keep it simple and easy, one, two, three, four, five. That's a group. Okay? So as we go down this way, the next group of five people get together, get your gear, it's fine, and we'll keep going down this way uh, until the very end of it. All right? Make sure you have your gloves, your mask, and everything like this. Pair, we're going to get everyone here into their groups, and then Brandy and I are going to demonstrate the practice of what you're going to do here to experience this practice. Okay, so let's get those groups going. So this first, first portion right here, we're going to put our, I'm just going to demonstrate with the left foot forward posture. But again, please choose to explore. All we're doing is we're going to make that position. I don't care, we're doing, whether it's meza, whether it's puta, meza, or, or forte, it doesn't matter. All, but for right now, I want you to put yourself somewhere in the middle between puta di spada and meza spada. And we're going to explore the algorithm, the first algorithm of crossing right here. That may forgive me, because what we see in the manuscript, put this up a bit. we see this, right? Give me a crown, right? That's what we see. But how much other stuff came into that that we may have forgot? So for right now, all we're going to do, we're going to pair up. And what I want you to do in this right here, I don't want you to twist your hands. Keep it static. We're going to go back and forth to give people opportunities. All one person's going to do is they are going to hold that position, right? And the other person is going to explore offline movement and see what happens and how this shifts direction of approach. So I might utilize, again, a largo with my left, with an across the stress. Or I might, Pissar, I might go here and see what happens. And the person over here is not tracking or anything. They're just staying center line. And the reason why we're doing this is because we're seeing how this changes the approach. Note how your sword is facing. Note what happens to theirs. Note everything. If you want to practice stretto, we can still that more think the fendante line. Think that senyo. We might and see what happens here. Just start to experience. Or we might offline right here. We might see how this all works. Just see what happens. Keep the sharp simulators with a pair. We'll rotate them around. That's why I want a pair for groups so y'all get to experience this. And later on, when we get to go sparring. I want you to be able to use those things right there and see the totality of what's happening there. Okay? We're talking this for a reason. Anatomically, it makes sense. With gauntlets, it makes sense. We're not talking 16th century combat. Okay? It makes a lot more sense to be able to do this, especially with the anatomy, which comes down to gauntlets. Okay? 
So what are some things we observed with just using footwork on that by keeping that structure and how that came around different areas? Please. Strength of, well, it's where you're binding. When I was uh, taking meso level steps, I noticed that I was uh, binding almost kind of on like the side of the sword. If I was starting to take passing steps, the bind had a different feeling to it, and I felt like I was pushing the weapon back as opposed to pushing it to the side. That's my observation. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Who else? Uh, we noticed. I, I thought that if I would come forward, it would bind more than when I uh, would step backward. <clears throat> like it would, it would bite into. Okay. Well, so different observation of biting. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else? And whichever side your sword was on, if you stepped away from it, you'd end up on top. Or if you stepped with it, you'd end up underneath the other person's blade. Okay. Excellent. Who else? Who else knows something else? Behind you. Hurt behind you. anatomy of encrosada may already start to change. <laughs> also, when you bound at the tip and push forward, that bound, that bind stuck. And so you instantly came, naturally came to that yeah. which was so weird otherwise. So creating these positions right here may or may not be making those positions. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't think this position <laughs> is what Fiori is telling you to do. I think it is just, again, what's the, what's the title of the slide? It's an algorithm. It's a variable. All he is showing here is it's like a slideshow presentation. Let's see how we cross the tips right here. Remember, there's two things you can do here. So the next phase that we're going to be doing here is now we're going to add that second step. Because all of these things mean that we can manipulate it. Now, mind you, this type of sword, this is, may not be necessarily realistic because when it gets very narrow like a type 15 we slide really fast yes. having done this with sharp weapons it goes very fast but it's also very stunning how much these things stick so this next phase that we're doing here we're going to start adding but we're not striking anybody we're just observing off of the blade motion what happens so we cross up again i don't care how you stand we're not doing edge to edge this one's flat so in this case, as I step across, and then maybe I come right here and I just observe what happens when I take that, I don't know, stretto stance. I've not gone, so here's the thing. For the footwork, I don't believe this is stretto. I think this is just the star. Your fendente lines are stretto. It's circular. Now, I mean, you might be playing with this crossing right here, but Kurt, you just went straight. But did I? Because by shifting here, my senyo now is like this. So therefore, this means I'm traversing off of the pendente line, or the mezzani line. So I want you to do all of this, is utilize that same kind of concept. You may, again, this is good explore. I might go step, step, side went, largo stretto. Maybe I decide to go stretto, largo. Just play and see where you get in crossing. And off of that crossing, observe what happens once again. Edge, edge on flat, edge on edge, fly on flat. The person on the side is not defending because they're not trying to defend. Their purpose is to be able to see that crossing right there. Okay? Do that again, but now add that second step. Remember, we're not talking about trying to strike. Abandon your arms. We're not there yet. Just seeing what footwork alone does for us. Okay? Go ahead and keep the same groups. And when we talk about Punta de Sada, what are the two things that Fiore writes to do? What are the two things to do? Thrust or cut to the other side. Thrust or cut to the other side. Okay? When we talk about the Meza area, what are the things that happen there? There's two things. Wasn't it a cut and using it to bind? So that might be one. You say cut or using it to bind. Describe further. If I were to perform 
Spotify, then Dent Day Cut on Grizz, I want my cut to be at the point of percussion, which is close to the meza. And the meza is something I use to bind my opponents. So again, excellent. But what happens if you are here in the middle? What are the two things you can do? You can what? I can push and bind. That might have already happened. No, no. Okay, so there's those. So what's that mean? Same side play. You're not cutting around anymore. Oh. So I met the spot, huh? I'm here. I could slide down. Or you step offline. I mean, there's Largo. And thrust them in the chest. If I cross like this, because the picture shows, the guy looks really mean, right? Like, <laughs> right? But then the next picture, the guy shows him like this. Is that not a wide step? So, with that being the case, that is one thing to do. What's the other thing? It's binding, but what, what are the other plays that follow off that, that one perspective? Isn't that like grab their elbow or something? Grab their blade. Grab the blade. Right? So essentially, at Mezzaspada, we have two options. Stay on that side of play, either by thrusting forward or cutting down to the hand, or engaging the sword so you don't leave it. Okay? Before you go to the Copa Polano, we'll get there. How that actually, I think, is another algorithmic process to be able to get back here. We're not there yet. All right, straddle play. What is the only thing that Fiori tells us about straddle? Someone tell me. Whatever you can do, they can do. Hey! There we go! So essentially, right there, as that close play, we only are, what they can do, I can do. Now, at Stretto, what we're moving in is a constraint. And again, what I think that's happening is we're moving more into the fourth day of the Spada. We are now in a space where if I step back to try to put my sword, you can step back and put the sword into me. If I reach over and cross right here at this place, she can reach over and cross in my, in my hands. So what you can do at that space is you've given up all other options, and now everyone that's possible right there, you can do, okay? So to play with this, to kind of show a little bit of the advice on this right here, what we're gonna do is make sure you have your gloves, masks, etc. And what I want you to do here is, again, we're gonna show why, again, I think the wisdom as far as to why Fiori tells these things, we're gonna cross up at Point of the sword. And that can be bound, it can be flat on flat, I don't care. What I want you to do is this. In this crossing, reach for it. Okay, you can see the point. Now, the person that's grabbing for it, you're going against somebody right here. This is why we need extreme level of control. If I reach for this, she has all the time in the world to stab me. Right? Or she has all the time in the world to come this way to thrust me because I've just given up my strength of my two hands on the sword. So I want you all to cross up, and you're going to have one person off the side there say, when you're ready, go. You're not game of fire. Can you grab the sword at, at, at Punta Spada? If you don't have a tip, make sure that somebody has a tip and use that right there. We're not grabbing this in there. That's all the point right here. We're looking at this once again. We're going to break the algorithm and see why the wisdom that they tell us. Alright? Masks, gloves. Alright, now we're going to do another one. Mezzaspada. Again, we need gloves and masks for this right here. And again, control. What we're doing right here is, we're not doing Copa Volano. Okay? We're not doing Copa Volano. Cross up. What is going to happen here is, as I try to lead, all I'm going to do here is from this position, I'm going to raise up and cut to the other side. <laughs> now, if you can do that, and before you, before you say, oh, who would ever do that? You all go to tournaments? <laughs> you all spar? I got a fucking go, mama! Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Case in point, how many times have you crossed at Mezzaspada and died for it because you tried to go to the other side? Mm. So we're going to kill you a lot today, too. Okay? When you cross up, 
what we're going to have here is at the measured bottom, so if he tries to leave, I'm just going to come straight forward. Now I'm pushing myself up flying because I'm not wearing masks. She cannot successfully hit me without me covering this. So that's your goal. Can you hit the person without being hit? You pull and pull from the line, you're not doing it. The whole point right here is to do hop it around and go to the other side. Say we're mixing up these things together. Hop it around and go to the other side. Alright? So, again, one person in crossing, in this case, as, as soon as I raise up with this, she's just gonna respond. And that right there puts us right here to this position. We're gonna look at again if we're trying to leave out of that. Why don't do it? So, time to die. Masks, gloves, sonic, play. play as you will. <laughs> Have this right here. The first option to do is I'm going to try to get away without letting her, with my, I'm going to try to get away without her sticking with me. So because we're so close, as I started to step back, she can follow this very easy, can't she? So try to leave the close quarter thing. That's one variant. The other one is, as we're here, maybe I step away, and as I come down this way, once I get to a certain spot, have that person try to attack me and you respond to in this crossing right here, as soon as I start stepping back, it's right there. Yeah. Okay, so again, again, we're looking at algorithm of crossing of distance. That's the point of it. We're not looking at plays, we're looking at, we're looking at functionality and how crossing makes a difference in what we're, our, our psychological approach might be to someone's posture. Okay? Last play of that all. Go ahead, pair up. Alec. How many times do we find ourselves at a method spot across and we try to cut around? How many times do we find ourselves in a freaking, I don't know, forte crossing and try to cut around, whether it be fair or horizontal, whatever you want to call it, whatever the screen you got? How many times do you find yourself there when there's easier crossing to get to? Why try to get the sword into action when your hand can get into action, right? You come to crossing here. So if she starts to step backwards, I'm just going to grab right here. Now I've made another cross. cross yeah. Other ways of getting into that Abazari study. So right now we're just looking at all the things in here that do not work. And so I think going to that against everything that Fjord tells us to do. At the point, try to grab the point of the sword. Don't do that. Instead, play the fight with it. Rust in or cut around. To provoke into that and cut around. Crossing does not necessarily have to be, does not have to be this. It might be I'm right here. Anyone who was at the last WMA Devil or Federico is here. The crossing might be, it might be, okay. it might be this. So you all were crossed. So you all, are we? We're not touching. But we're still crossed. So we're talking about distance. And how I choose to enter that distance allows how me to manipulate this thing in a completely and totally different fashion. The next thing we're going to go into here is if it goes to the position of the two people, one person is supposed to be done on a supplier, the other one is supposed to be done on the right side. This right here, what these two guards they do, yeah, the other one will counter. Correct? Basic theory. I don't care about how much you know. I don't care about all the Winn-Dixie tricks that you may get. Basic truth. If I, from this position, it doesn't matter, we can put a right hand on the shoulder here. If I, Mesovolta, and I try to right fit that thing, we come in, will you put Mesovolta in? We make a crossing, we are opposing in structure. Basic rule. By deductive reasoning, and I say this right here because we also have, she goes from the right post to Donna, and I go into the left. Well, what does this mean now? You mean your opposites? You're mirrored. You're moving, you're going so we, through different directions. Mirrored. mirrored. Yeah. Again, not in the manuscript, but again, the first portion, if these two can do the same thing, then what happens if I choose to use one of the positions that is mirrored to the side of the sword of my opponent? And now we're going into the entry portion of breaking and binding, where choice of action means something different. So this may seem very basic, but I promise you in a little bit here, when you have choice of action, and you put all this algorithm together, and you look across, and I say, Talon's a big drink of water. Man, oh man, I am not getting close to him. 
how can I pick this guy apart from a distance and fight my game? What algorithm do I have to put to that fighter? How are they positioned? Are my mirrored or am I opposing? The first thing I want you to do here is we're going to practice this right here. It's very basic. But again, I want you to see what happens. We're going to employ some basic concepts of the play that he does. And then we're going to make it to the other side. So all that's happening right here is we're on the right, we're on the right uh, side position. All we're going to do is use that one mesa bolt again and strike out into this. It doesn't matter what cross you make. I don't care. So as she strikes, and then we reset. Notice, in this case, if we think about the semi line, I took a stretto advance. Remember that close line, but it was still outside. Or, if I can, Largo. What does this do right here? How does rounding it happen this way? Those are using Fasari and Mesovoltia. I can also utilize the crest. Now we may find ourselves this way. Or, I can utilize a stretto across. What happens? And perhaps stretto and largo and how we make those crossings have a lot more about how our angle goes this way. All we're doing here is to play right to right. The master's just going to do this. Sit. Scholar. Explore the footwork crossing we did earlier. So we get to the inside. We get close. We play wide. Play stretto. Play all those lines right there. Put them in place and see what happens. Don't, it doesn't matter what crossing you make, but maybe pay attention to that. Don't try to hit the person. Just think about you're trying to contain that space in the middle because that's where the algorithm again comes into play. Pair up with this. Okay. We're talking about entry of approach. This next set right here, what we're going to do here is so what happens in the case where if I'm like this, and now, as this happens here, Brandy's in the right, the right post to Donna. What happens if we do the same exact mechanics, but mirrored? Meaning, I throw a left pendente, and I make mezzo volta, and she throws a right pendente, and she does a mezzo volta at the feet. What happens? Well, aren't you, aren't you just going to put your uh, true edge on her false edge? I mean, I, that, that is an option. You're looking at, you're looking at option, you're looking at opportunities here. Yeah. Point being is I get to the inside of someone's arc. So just for ease of this right here, so as she comes in with it and she strikes, I get to the outside, which allows to help the blade to go to the outside of the line. So as I go mirrored in structure, I am able to find ways, again, to be able to find, so say, say, this, say Brandy's like a Hulk, and she is. She stabs a lot of people. I may not want to meet her in a bind because I'm going to lose that. And she's very strong, but she is very strong. So instead, I might take up a position that is mirrored in structure. So as that shot comes in, I can use her strength against her. And we're going to experience this now just using post the Donna and post the Donna. Okay? So Sinestra and Posty Dawn. The master is going to utilize, again, that basic to strike. Make it a, make it a, when I say a loose fendente, I mean, think about going Posty Dawn on the Soprana, Posty uh, Longa, down to the Dente di Cingaro. That's all you're doing. You're not fighting for the center. And on the outside, on the other side here, I'm going to do the same thing, but he's cool about it. As she swings in, go for it. I'm going to break the sword. And I'm purposely not hitting her because we're not wearing masks. But it is very easy to hit somebody with this. This is not queuing. That's queuing. That's a culpi. This is just, I don't know. Coming through and making it so it goes through teeth through knees for good measure, as the maestro says. You don't have to swing that hard, but that's the blow I want. This. You want a blow that goes through the person. Okay? This. Nothing. So. All that to say, work that here into a mirrored structure, and again use the footwork. So from here, he strikes in, I might use the cross. By the way, that sets me up. I might utilize the Zavolta to set these things up. And you're already seeing here how utilizing 
concepts of angle shift how I may have to fight different people. Because if you heard my other classes, it's not a walking stick. Please, don't lean on the sword. As you've heard in some of my other classes, the only advice I see that Fiore gives is assess that person. That's a big guy. Oh boy, I am not going to bind with him. I'm going to fight in a way that makes me hit, that takes away all strength and makes him frustrated and to the point where I can use something. I am hunting Colin. I like Colin. But the person he's not presenting, you're that guy. He himself is awesome. Okay, so we're going to play that breaking measure. Okay, pair up again, work the inside. Left to left, okay. left to right. Masters is cutting it, right pendente, all the way down. The last portion of this drill is, again, is, is where if the person is striking in, so she goes into a right Vidana, and I go into a left. As I come across, as I come in here to break her, she's going to turn her edge into me. And she's, she's, she's going to see it and stop me. She's not going to let me break her. And we're going to see how we get to a crossing. How once again, if different crossings and breaking become binding. <coughs> so again, I'm here. Strike comes in. I come across, and she turns in. And now we go from a break to a bind. All we're looking at is what can happen at crossing. Not winning. What can you do? That's it. Pair up. Play. And why might you want to do that? Because um, I want to wrestle Phil. You want to wrestle <laughs> Phil. This yeah. is for your life. You want to get in a big guy out there who may be able to do horrible things. <laughs> so you want to stay part of the Okay. But the point being is, no, you maybe want to be close. It doesn't matter. Either way, whether whether it's for training or for real, whatever, it doesn't matter. The point being is, I look at Phil and I'm like, I don't want to grapple this guy. I'm a savvy grappler. I don't want to grapple him. If anything, I want to play in a way that allows me to take his hands and pick apart his hands so he can't grapple me. Then I want to go. So it becomes a concept of crossing. What is your algorithm? What's your name? Eric. Eric, really fit dude. Probably freaking bench press me, squat press me, put me on the ground, I'm dead, right? Do I want to grapple that? Maybe. What happens if I grapple it and I put myself into a strato on his largo? How oh, that breaks structure. That's all you've been doing here. This edge on the flat piece right here is no different than with the body. If we put ourselves into a basic structure, left foot forward, we are in edge on edge. We've entered a bind. If I put myself right here, don't move, into this position, he's flat to my body, resistance. That is no different than the concept of breaking over a sword. So by choosing to break over and break over their structure line allows me to break them over like I break the sword, which gives me an advantage into getting crossing. This is just algorithmic process. It's the first crossing of the sword. This is all the stuff beforehand. Before the play. This next drill we're going to do here is what I call catch cover release. Now that we've looked at some of these things right here, what is going to happen? Because you played on the same side, you played on opposite sides, you've done these things right here. We've bound, we've broken. Catch counter release is just a drill right here where now I don't care what side you play on. I don't care if you go if you take a high guard or a low guard. We're not thrusting at this point. We're utilizing. And this is just for this stage, Pendente and Sultani. Okay? That's all I really want. We're not thrusting at this distance. We are crossing at this distance. And yes, we have Punta. There's ways to do that. We're not talking about that just yet. He takes up a position. I don't care which one. It doesn't matter. He goes left. So in this case, as you have the sweep and the strike, I look at this and I choose to mirror her. So she takes an action, and instead of breaking, I choose to bind. All I'm doing here is I took an accrescimento on the, on the largo line of the center, as you talk about, right? To bind. We're not going any further. It's your choice of action. I want you to look at that person. How do you actually enter on them and explore the numerous ways? This is just one way. By coming here, I get ways to get into the inside of her. I may also, again, please. Stay, stay I may play to the outside of her. The point being is, algorithmically, 
How do I want to attack that? And what position may you put yourself in? So as you pair up with this, don't just go swinging away. Take a position. Get the person who's playing master. Give a second. And when the person's made their, their, their quick assessment, like, okay, what do I want to do? They take up a position, and then utilize a presente, or some time to be able to create different crossings all at once. How can you enter in where there's no rules now? Don't worry about hacking and slashing afterwards. That's, that's later shift. I'm talking about right now. Catch, count, and release. Basically coming in. I see this right here. I come across. I wait. That's it. That's what I want. That's, you're getting into entry. You're controlling the space. It's not just a play. That play is a, it's a power play. That's it. Okay? Right. So, with that being the case, pair up. How late? That's the spot of crossing. <laughs> or was it just cross? <laughs> it was just cross. Thank you for your honesty. So are we thinking about what we're crossing here? Or are we just saying, oh, just strike? How much of the algorithm did you just negate? Do you know where to cross? Because here's the thing about that. This is the part that becomes crazy about all the promotions we get. Because we're talking about this algorithmically. At this thrust, at the point, at the point of the sword, thrusts go around, right? So there might be a reason why I decided to push up to her, up to her mezzo where she might drive in, right? But I want to utilize that right there to get her to move. Because algorithmically, at the point of the sword, I choose to cross that way, I choose to present, so that I have a weakness position, so it's easier for me to get to the other side. Are you crossing on your intent? So this next drill, you're going to do the same drill you did right here, but this time, the person that's going to be scholar, you don't say it to the very end. So in this case right here, she's going to take a position, and she's going to utilize any of the, of the, of the pendente and the satan, right? I did not make my crossing. I intended to cross at the mezzo of but I went to the fourth we talk about these different <laughs> I made where I wanted to go. Meaning that essentially, because what I'm saying here is like I actively, in my mind, wanted to cross here. I am intending to aim the sword here. Can you do the same? Or is it just crossing? What's your visimento? Is it blinded by just swing? Or it's undivided, and you can sit there where you need to go and use all the tools right there to make the crossings necessary on your turn. We're going to find out. Joe Sparring is going to be operating in the concept of one person being tempo keeper, and the other one is going to be playing along with. The point of this is to play along with what's happening here. To start off, I don't want it to be go, 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 go. That's not what we're at. We're not trying to think a tournament fight and fight out here. I don't care about any of that. It means nothing. What it means here in this space is you've got to control your observation. Are you divided? Where's your attention? If it's just hit, oh my God, where's my attention? The reality is out here in the list, where this is where this may have been a much more real conception. It's a great way to eat, eat earth and suck in worms through your sights. Okay? When you lose all that posture. Go sparring is going to be, again, off of this right here. It may look like something like this. And I want to keep a slower tempo. We've been floating around with this. I'll be tempo keeper. And again, for this, please make sure you have masked gloves, etc. Tempo keeper. And Brandy is going to be playing along with it. So I take up a position. As master, she's going to assess this. We are not at a crossing yet. I'm in, we are masters of battle play. I took up two supports before. And off that, she assesses. Kurt's taller than me. She's got a wider gate than me. What kind of position do I know that utilizes this in a way that may play to my size structure? Not just the size structure, but her size structure. So we know there's other footwork. And depending on how you look at your approach, becomes the answer. So, it may look like this. Go. 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 Go, go. And we 
we stop right here. Whole point right there is we're looking at ways of to systematically find this. And again, I want you to try to apply that concept. Fiori's dead, so he'll be the one that tells me about that, but I'll meet him later on. <laughs> Did you really mean this is Largo and this is Stretto based upon laying down the Senyo? Personally, I find great success when it comes down to edge combat. That to me makes a lot of sense about the approach. Do you make the choice of action? Point, Meza, and, and, and Forte. Remember the rules of them. These are all variables in the algorithm. That is our stance. By breaking this and finding the angles there, we find a way to be able to face against somebody. Don't hold expectations. It divides your, it divides your attention. And utilize that at crossing. Okay? So this should be very slow. Think, go. Go. That's the pace that we're talking about right now. So what did we find out there? What are some of the observations? What were some, here's the deal, what were some of your expectations? What do you think that you're going to learn in this class? What did we learn? One thing I could share with you, um, I thought at least for me, if I wanted to force the first master bind, I could easily do it against the Tendente. I could not do it against the Sismani. I had to go to second master, which is fine, but I had, couldn't oh, yeah. Or I could go to Strata. So you learn that that's about right there. Tactically, it makes sense for you to manipulate the footwork and angle in a way that you can end it safely and go off play, essentially. Nice. Oh, he was first. Um, I, one thing I learned from this class was just how many more options you have when you have that bite. I always wanted to uh, it, Especially uh, the raw beret or other sort of blade control situation. Very hard to do with a, uh, a blunt, but once you've got that little crib in there, it opens up a whole new world of uh, uh, nasty things to do to people. Yes. Yes. Well, you? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Greg, you were first. You were first. Uh, no plan survives first contact. Yeah. So like, all that stuff Ben was talking about, I can't even spell that. So I have to get into the point where eventually like your opponent's not going to go where you're planning them to go. So at some point you have to develop that muscle memory and eventually go on instinct. Your instincts have to be right, but adapt, adapt, adapt. Because never, never assume your opponent is stupid. To build on that, that's the whole point of this right here. These are just nodes. So if I was training you, you do this a thousand times. And you do those same dumbass plays that, that, you know, as far as like, oh, let me grab a sword at crossing and put to these spots and stab your hand a thousand times. Just to learn, don't fucking do it, right? Or at Mezzespada, yeah, go cut around at Mezzespada. <laughs> and get hacked down to pieces. Learn all the wrong ways. Because of that right here, you're going to learn ways that allows you to move and take action. Because in order to be able to use those things like Greg's talking about, you have to know the theory, the algorithm that allows you. And it's not just in. And that might be what their choice is. But how you choose to meet that is completely and totally incumbent upon what you are trying to do. I guess, Kurt, it's another way to say it. Knowledge without mileage is bullshit. <laughs> I like Great that. Training without practice. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I, I took it from Henry Rowan. A really <laughs> simple way to understand <laughs> opening into sparring. <laughs> um, some things that I can just like quick think on the spot without just standing there like an idiot thinking, okay, well, I'm going on this, 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 and then I'm going to get stabbed. Just quick options that I don't have to spend a whole lot of time thinking about to better understand my opening. If it didn't work, sparring, okay, cool. How can I improve on it then? What can I change in that algorithm next time? Right. Maybe next time, what happens if I utilize a, a falso against a Mandrito? What happens if I play into the break against a big fellow who really wants to hit me? Just a sort of ping and cut right back down and thrust right back in because you're playing into strength. <laughs> Learning observation. Great. What else? <laughs> I'll ask this the concept of Largo and Stretto. So that's how I see it. It's not a distance thing. Distance is on the sword. You can cross it by stepping across. Think about every play that happens when it comes down to it. Coming over to a mass strength into one side so that you can go into the person. Basic concept of feeling. Amassing over and then striking through. 
I think it's just Fiore. I noticed that. Go with the left and strike with the right, and then left to right. If you want to fence strongly, for those that may not know that, that's the Zettel. Just going to put that out there. So a crest off line and then strike through. So it's not just Fiore. That may have been much more the line of how you close this right here. One fights with all the body, Lichtenauer. Okay. So even though this is something right here, we're looking at Fury's arm, it's all right. The concept is to use all the body, and not just your arms. So I promise you, if you're wearing armor, you're not going to last very long. I promise you. Any thoughts on Larry going straight on this interpretation? I'm going to have to think about it more before I can actually <laughs> answer that. <laughs> like, good? I'm going to have to try it. Yeah. Yeah. Plan to move in that way. Because being able to move. To him, so okay. Here's the deal. Just trying to hit the person is one thing here, but if you if the person hit, if you can hit the person back, then that plan is something right here of a game. It's not it's, it's not it's not the reality. Well, I thank you all for this right here. Again, this whole point right here about the algorithm at all is the point is that you can't just look at the play of the crossing of the sword and say that's it. When you have all this stuff before, and I'm actually gonna quote something that uh Whitehall was talking about before, he's like, wow, you just taught me how to fight as a lefty, or against a lefty. The reality is, it doesn't matter what side you are. If they're a left side, you can bite into a left side by just going whatever side you want to go off. You can break that side, depending on how these go, because how you choose to play. It doesn't have to be complicated. It just has to be your visimento and your awareness of the opponent and how they stand. It all goes back to that first piece. Be aware of what you're doing. So that's all I got. If there's anyone else that's got anything, please come see me afterwards. I gotta, I gotta get right here to meet up. But otherwise, thank you so much for coming out. I know y'all have had a long day. Trust me, staying in this woolen freaking thing after a whole day of freaking armor is exhausting. So my heart's out to all of you for freaking sparring after all that stuff too. So that's been a lot. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, we'll ring them out, make some beer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you all.